Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the latest instalment in the Keep Prison Single Sex campaign and that is the vexatious complaint made to the Parliamentary Commissioner in the House of Lords regarding the statements made by the peers that I featured in my previous videos who all stood up for the rights of women to be incarcerated with other members of our sex class and not incarcerated with men or members of the male sex class who um, have a completely different criminal profile and can put us at risk of rape and impregnation, which is cruel and unusual punishment. Baroness Mayer, who I have featured in a previous video, um, looking at her contribution in the House of Lords debate on Amendment 97 uh, ZA, uh, she was interviewed on GB News by Alex Phillips, uh, and she had this to say about what was going on and this is a woman who understands totalitarianism. How on earth did we get to the point that those wanting to protect women's rights and women's spaces are being so aggressively censored in a manner that would make the Taliban proud? Well, we're joined now by one of the peers, Baroness Catherine Mayer. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Catherine. You vowed to really stand your ground on this issue. Explain to me what happened. Well, we received a letter which, was, uh, which took us aback quite a lot because basically, apparently, a member of the public complained that we debated this quite important issue and there was no bad words, nothing, but I think it's just the fact that we used the wording transgender women. So there was a complaint. And instead of the commissioner uh, taking away the complaint by saying this is freedom of speech, parliamentary privilege, what is said inside parliament is protected, he actually only dismissed this complaint on a technicality. So we were all rather taken aback because it transforms everything. If what I say in Parliament is going to be criticised only because some people disagree with my views, um, this is the end of democracy. And I have to tell you, I mean, my mother is of Russian origin and her family escaped the Bolsheviks. And I went to the Soviet Union when I was a child and I so firsthand what it is not to have a democratic debate, not to have a parliament where, as in our parliament, what is wonderful is you have the uh, party in power, but you also have the opposition. And it's the whole idea of democracy is to have the two sides, which represent also the public, because the public, not everybody has the same view. So we have to be able to discuss things, to try and convince each other. Maybe my view is better than yours, but we need the debate. And if we stop debating, we are actually uh, in danger of stopping a democratic system, which has been around for hundreds of years. But then there is also the issue of women. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, let, uh, sticking with what actually happened in part, why is it, do you think, that when it comes to this argument, when women stand up and say, it, it's not appropriate, or I don't believe it's appropriate for a man who asserts that he's a woman to have access to what are women's only spaces, on the grounds of the safety of the women, reliance on those spaces, why is it that this particular argument seems to attract an almost chilling level of fascism where people are just shut down, they're called TERFs, their comments were raised from parliamentary records. I mean, where, what, how have we got here? I have no idea. It's madness. I mean, it originally comes from the States. And it's a sort of, it's a culture that came, it's like a cult. And there is sort of one agenda. You're allowed to say certain words. You're allowed to have a specific opinion. I mean, it's infiltrated at universities. I mean, you saw that uh, quite a few months ago, Kathleen Stock had to resign from her university because she held the view, which is not a view. She actually 
held said something which is logical and biological. A woman is a woman. And a person who changes sex is a person who changed sex, but they were not born women. I mean, this is a fact of life. This is biology. But somewhere there is a new culture that came in, and people call it the canceling culture. And it even infiltrated, you know, universities, in schools, and now it seems in parliament. And there is one line, and you are allowed to say one thing, but you're not allowed to say something which is different, even though it is facts. So we have ideology that takes over facts. And people are intimidated, and it's actually quite scary. I have to say, they're scary. Yeah, and I find it. Woman. I find it harrowing. I find it really harrowing and distressing, and deeply dangerous for women. So thank you so much, Baroness Catherine Mayer, for being there to fight the fight on behalf of vulnerable women. Because you know, don't don't let them silence you. I'm with you all the way, Baroness Catherine Mayer. There, who's a Conservative peer. Now, so. In brief, what happened was that uh, complaints were made to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards, who is the person who oversees kind of the behaviour of parliamentarians and um, deals with any complaints that are made. Now, the thing is that ever since in in the UK, uh, we had a, a civil war back in the in the 1600s, and since um, Parliament was re-established. Um, we have had in, enshrined in law uh, certain things uh, related to freedom of speech. And one of those things is, is the parliamentary privilege, uh, which relates to um, statements that are made either in the House of Commons or in the House of Lords. Now, those are the only places in the country where you can say exactly what's on your mind. And even if it is something that would be considered libel elsewhere, uh, or even if you knowingly uh, say something that you, you know to be untrue, uh, you are covered by parliamentary privilege. You cannot be sued for libel by anybody. Your statements in the House of Lords or the House of Commons cannot be used in a court case against you or against anybody else. They are kind of taken out of that whole system of civil justice that we have that regulates our free speech rights and balances them with the with the human rights of others. Alex Phillips went on to continue the conversation with Belinda De Lucy, and I'm including that here. Well, Belinda, what do you think on this issue? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why are the alarm bells not going off up and down the country? This is becoming an incredibly sinister movement. The very pretty harmless trans community from 10, 20 years ago who just wanted to get on with their lives have been hijacked by, in my opinion, gender extremists, gender ideologists who have no interest in equal rights. They want special rights. They want to own women's rights. They are driven now by this belief. The only way they can get what they want is by raising women as a sex group. And they've been allowed to infiltrate the highest echelons of, of our power um, houses. And uh, as a woman, I get... I get in fact, even I, well, I say as a woman, men are on our side as well. I don't know any dad, brother or son who wants their daughters and sisters and mothers to have their right of refusing males in their safe spaces taken away from them. Who wants that? Um, I think there needs to be an investigation as to how it's got so far into our House of Lords where free speech is now under attack. And if you look throughout history, look at the movements that have depended and demanded on censorship, on, on compelled speech, on threatening livelihoods of people if they speak out. These are not the good guys. This is a very, very, I find it a very dangerous and frightening movement because it relies on, on terrifying women um, into staying silent. So they can say, oh, yes, women, you know, they all support men self-IDing into women's spaces. No, we don't. It's just people too scared to speak up. And a young girl came to me uh, recently. She was only about 23. 
And she said, can you please speak up for the young? Because young women cannot afford to be cancelled. So we don't speak out against self-ID. We don't speak out about gender extremism because our careers are at risk. So it's up to you older ladies to take the baton on. But I repeat, it is not the genuine small group of trans women who are often on our side with women's, women's rights. These are gender extremists that have hijacked the community. So what is the answer then when it comes to a trans prisoner, a man who might have committed a crime and then decides that they identify as a woman or perhaps they identify as a woman when they commit the crime. It doesn't really matter about the um, chronology of it. But, but where do you put them then? Right. Well, very easy. Uh, in a man's prison, because male prisoners should be together. Now, in, it's very clear that this movement is incredibly sexist because it never, ever looks to men to solve the issues of trans-identifying males. So they never say to men, you have to be more wel welcoming to males who want to dress effeminately or wear their hair long or makeup in your, in your areas. And they never say to male prisons, create a block for trans-identifying males so they are kept safe and protected from violent offenders. The burden is always put on women. Women must take the burden for male-on-male -male violence. Women must take the burden for, for males needing to feel validated. But we're talking about criminals. They're, they're sec a lot of these men who want to suddenly become women in prison are sex offenders. And they are being considered to, to, for, for uh, a, a process where they can be moved into a women's prison. This is, this is twisted. It is, it is almost a crime against women what is happening. And I cannot believe under Boris Johnson's government that we are facing a situation where we have male prisons and unisex prisons. Male sport and unisex sport. The female categories are protections that our female biology requires. The very few it requires are now being deemed a hate crime. We are now being uh, uh, demonised as turfs and bigots when we speak out. And it is an absolute crime against women. And anyone who, who drives this ideology needs to be called out. We've got to unite and get behind this. Amy. Tough stuff, Belinda. Yeah. Well, so know. angry about I it. I cannot believe it's got this. I cannot believe I've just listened yeah. to a member of the House of Lords, frightened. And, and, and all the people are standing up. Men and women are standing up, cheering it on. What are they doing? This is madness. Yeah. Well, no, it is madness indeed. What do you think? Is it madness? So, um, <laughs> what, when a group of people have such privilege that they're now going to try and take down parliamentary privilege, that is not a marginalised group. That is not a marginalised identity. That is a really, really loud warning bell that this ideology has really negative implications for our entire democracy. This is not about feminism anymore. This is not about women's rights anymore. This is about the human rights of every person in a democracy. Um, to to have a, a, a system of government whereby people are allowed to say what they think without fear of censure. I mean, how on earth are we going to get anywhere if even parliamentarians, even the most privileged people, members of the House of Lords, can't say what's on their mind when they're debating the issues of the day? It's incredible. This is where we are. Please write to Baron... Baroness Mayer, Baroness Fox, Lord Blencathra, Lord Cormac. I've written to all of them to thank them for their position that they took in the police crime bill uh, debate when Lord Blencathra tabled his amendment 97ZA. Please do write to them if you have a moment. Just send them a little thank you note just to say that their work is appreciated. Lord knows they need our support. They're there for us. I don't see any reason why we can't be there for them. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great weekend. See you soon.